simple question. What are the solutions to the 1D Helmholtz equation in case you're working in a uniform medium? So pause the video and calculate those solutions. In the 1D case, we can write the Helmholtz equation as follows. So first of all, the Laplacian just reduces to second order derivative, for example, with respect to x, and then plus k squared psi is equal to zero. So that's a very basic differential equation. And you know since kindergarten that, for example, one solution is cosine kx, which you can easily verify to be a, a solution. Because if you take the derivative with respect to x, this becomes minus k sine of kx. And if you do that again, you have minus k squared cosine of kx. So you get back to cosine and you pick up an extra factor minus k squared, which will help to cancel with the second term here. So this is indeed a solution. And for the very same reason, sine of kx is also a solution. If you take the derivative twice, you end back uh, up with a sine and you pick up minus k squared. So these are two solutions and obviously also any linear combination of these two guys will also be a solution. In particular, we can look at cosine kx plus j sine of kx. And our good friend Euler will tell us that this is equal to exponential j kx which is also a solution. You can easily verify that if you take the derivative once, this becomes jk exponential jkx. And taking the derivative once more, we pick up another factor minus j. So all in all, we have minus k squared exponential jkx. So again, same function as we started out from with a prefactor of minus k squared. We can also do the same thing with a minus sign here. So we have this linear combination and then this simply becomes a minus sign over there. So these are also two possible solutions, these complex exponentials, both with a plus sign and with a minus sign. If we look at the physics of the problem, we can say that these complex exponentials correspond to propagating plane waves, so just waves propagating either towards plus infinity or minus infinity and then the cosines and the sines they actually correspond to standing waves which you can easily verify because you know that cosine of kx you can actually write this in terms of complex exponentials exponential jkx plus exponential minus jkx divided by 2. So you see here that the cosine is actually a sum of two counterpropagating plane waves which is exactly what the standing wave should, uh, should be. Same thing holds, of course, for the sine of kx with slightly different prefactors. But again, conclusion is that also the sine is a linear combination of counterpropagating plane waves. So here you have the most common types of solutions. Any linear combination of any two solutions here will be the most general form of a solution. And you also have the physical interpretation in terms of either propagating plane waves for the complex exponentials and standing waves for the sines and the cosines.